All right, guys, welcome back to Surviving Hollywood. I'm Johnny Ray Diaz. I am Aaron Arnold. I am Austin Arnold. All right, so quick question, guys. Have either of you guys seen Suicide Squad? Maybe you heard of it? Seen the it. The new one. The new one. Oh, I've seen the first one. Seen it. I own it. But Dude. no, I haven't, I haven't seen it. No, I oh. just own it. Just that was an office joke. Dude, oh. I saw it. I loved it. <laughs> okay. And I'll say it, dude. No, no, I do remember that now. Yeah, my right. date, Mike. Uh, <laughs> Suicide Squad, the new one. In my opinion, the first one was good. This one's great. Superior. It's awesome. All right. So, so since Aaron did see it, you might have recognized a dude. Actually, our guest coming up right now, uh, Gerardo Davila. Uh, he was an actor in Suicide Squad. He played General Vera. Um, and dude. Great guy. I got to work with him in a movie in a movie that we shot together in Texas years ago. And we've always stayed in touch since then. And dude, he's in the new Suicide Squad. I mean, how sick is that? Um, what do you think about the movie, Aaron? Since you haven't seen it, Austin. I will. Uh, after this, I am going to. You better. <laughs> uh, you know, this is just my opinions. The, the, the first one was good. It had a bunch of great actors in it, but the studio chopped it up. And you know, it was flawed in many ways. The actors did great, but the movie is flawed in many ways. It was too dark. It was too much like they try to make the whole thing a trailer. Uh, you know, you, you've seen it. Now, this one, the new one, uh, it's totally James Gunn. Like, it seems like the studio is hands off. So James Gunn, you can do what you do best. And everybody benefited because of that likable characters, funny. Um, you know, it didn't necessarily do what you expected it to do. The whole thing was unique, creative. It was a, it was a great day at the theater. Yeah, it was so fun, um, super enjoyable movie. And um, it was cool because talking to Gerardo, he was kind of explaining like, one, how he got to actually work with James Gunn on a movie years ago called Super. And he actually remembered him. I mean, I, like, I feel like that sometimes never happens. So he shares his experience working with him, uh, working with some of the actors on set. And also, uh, which I always think is interesting, how he got the role. Yes. Because how do you book a huge studio movie like that? with an A-list director. I mean, he kind of breaks it down. Um, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't say this on mic, but in my mind, I was like, I am a sponge. You booked, you know, these major movies. How do you do it? And he literally just walked us through his journey and talked about advice he would give himself, you know, when he first started out based on where he is now. And I just thought this guy was full of life. I, you know, it's awesome to meet somebody with this much passion for acting and this much uh, enthusiasm to share. I love this episode. Yeah, it couldn't happen to a better guy. And you guys are here the story right now. Hollywood, Hollywood, Hollywood. Tell me what it's like to live in Hollywood. Hollywood, Hollywood, Hollywood. Tell me what it's like to live in life in Hollywood. I'm a survivor. There he is. How's it going, Aaron? Hey, what's up? How's it going? Good, pretty good. Um, doing good. Um, really yeah, enjoyed your movie, man. Thank you, man. Well, it's not my movie, but <laughs> <laughs> might as well be. I wish it was my movie. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been sitting there where Idris was standing the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I saw you on the poster, though. You know, maybe. You know. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, man. So how's how's everything going right now? You know, we so things are they're going pretty good. I mean, uh, tons of self tapes. Um, that's the that's the world I live in. <laughs> yeah. And do you, feel, um, do you feel like with the new movie coming out, like they've been more? Um, there's some things that are brewing. Okay. Uh, something, and I don't know what it is. So I'm not trying to get too excited yet because they won't, haven't shared a single detail of what it is. They just asked for availability, and this is the first time this might have happened this way from a big studio so i'm like okay but i don't i'll never get excited until there's an offer on the table <laughs> that's, that's you know, the right because, way yeah yeah because <laughs> you never know they're like oh no no that was just the and you're just it's like, oh, it's like being on a first round of refusal right and you still don't know and then they're like oh you've been released and you're like oh i really wanted that job <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> so for our audience that doesn't know you're obviously in the brand new james gunn Suicide Squad. Uh, tell us a little bit about the character you played, and uh, we'll kind of go into like a little bit of the process, the audition, and stuff like that. You got it. Um, 
So my name is Gerardo Davila. I'm from Dallas, Texas. I've been acting for about uh, 17 years now. Uh, consistent working actor, full-time for the last, uh, say, 12, 13 years. Um, I'm in the Suicide Squad. Um, did that. I booked that off a of self-tape, actually. Uh, I play the role of General Vera, and uh, we are part of a um, fictional South American country in the film. And, um, you know, going through the self-tape, you send in the self-tape, and you just put it away, forget about it. Uh, it wasn't until about, it was a month or maybe more later that a friend of mine who's also in the movie, Giovanni Cruz, she plays Isabella, one of the soldiers. Mm. She reached out and said, hey, I booked a huge movie. And I was like, whoa, what? She goes, yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is, though. <laughs> I just know it's a huge movie. Yeah. And, and I was like, how do you feel? She's like, I screamed my head off in the car when I heard. And I'm like, hey, I was really happy for her. You know, she, she's a hard worker. And I was like, all right, cool. And then a few weeks later, I get a call hey, you've been pinned for this thing, you know? And it had a different name. It was called El Dorado. That was the, mm. the fake title, right? Yeah. And so, you know, uh, you sign NDAs, you're not allowed to talk about it, whatever. So I'm like, okay, I booked something. I didn't know, I, you know, all I know is was the sides I had. I didn't even know a storyline. So there you go. I did that. And um, it was El Dorado. They're like, you're going to Atlanta. I was like, great. And uh, at this at this point, did you still once you got it did you still know what it was or not until you got there i honestly i didn't know it was suicide squad for a while okay uh, because they kept calling it el dorado and then when i my agent kept calling it a marvel movie she goes hey you booked a marvel movie and i was like i'm in a marvel movie <laughs> <laughs> and i was like which one and you're trying to research and can figure it out i was like I don't, what, what are they shooting i said nobody knows anything about and i'm like looking up el dorado and then finally that popped up on um I think it was on IMDb or something. And I was like, El Dorado. And then there were, there were no, no names, anything attached to it. So it was just kind of mm -hmm. random. And then my friend Giovanni goes, Gerardo, it's a DC Comics movie. You're not in a yeah. Marvel movie. We're in a DC Comics. I'm like, what are they making? Yeah. We still didn't have a clue. <laughs> kind of up in the air. So uh, it took a while before when we finally realized, well, when I finally screamed was when, <laughs> when we kind of figured out it was Suicide Squad. Then I was like, no freaking way. And um, it was, uh, let's see, I, if I booked this in the summertime, I didn't shoot till like November. So, um, you know, it, when I figured out it was James Gunn and I was like, oh, I already worked with him before uh, in a movie called Super um, mm. starring Rain Wilson. And uh, oh, yeah. so, I, don't think, I don't think I remember that one. I've seen you know, trailers for that. That looked good. It, it's hilarious. <laughs> I haven't seen the whole thing yet. I got to go back and rewatch it. But, you know, I had, a, I had a bit part in that where I was just a cop chasing a, a thief and mm. Rain Wilson's like, it's a funny movie. It's kind of like a kick-ass kind of. Okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. Pretty brutal. If you know James Gunn's style, he, yeah, he, this is one of his early films that kind of started putting him on the map. And mm -hmm. um, <laughs> my, my part was really short and simple. Self-tape as well. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, the process for that was, I had one line for that. It was, thanks. <laughs> and so self-taping that I'm like, how many different ways can you say thanks, right? Yeah. And I swear I did a hundred takes. And then I was like, I was sitting there overthinking it. And I thought, you know what? I erased them all. I said, I'm going about this the wrong way. Why are you even thinking about it? You just say it and move on. It's sometimes that simple, right? Right. Um, you meet a stranger on the street. Hey, here you go. Oh, thanks. And you move on. That's it. Don't put any thought into it. Don't try to act it. Thanks. You know? <laughs> So I raised everything. I said, I just literally walked up, turned to the you're, camera. You're like, do I do a British accent? What do I do? <laughs> no, like, let me, should I, you know. You want a cholo? You know, right, thanks, right. Thanks, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do I turn my hat backwards? Like, what do I do? You know? And so I, I raced it. I did it in one take. I, t I said, that's the one I'm sending in. And I booked it. Drove up to Shreveport because they were shooting it in Shreveport, Louisiana. I literally drove up, shot it an hour later, drove back home. <laughs> That's so, wild, so do you have a, do you just have one agent in Los Angeles or do you have a Southeast agent and an LA agent? So I used to have agents everywhere <laughs> and uh, you know, sometimes you, they work out, sometimes they don't. I had one in Sacramento. Right. I never had an actual true LA agent. So my Dallas agent, she opened up a tiny office in Los Angeles. She also reps, reps me there now, but um, she's you know very unknown there. So she really has to either just submit and hope somebody you know, accepts a submission and then you get a self tape. But I do have a Southeast agent, Landrum, and they rep me for all the entire Southeast. Now I have a Chicago agent uh, who reached out to me and said, I just want to be some extra eyes for you. 
no contract. If I see something, I'll check with you. If you've been submitted, you already auditioned for it. If not, hey, no worries. You know, it, it just be extra eyes for you. And I'm like, hey, I like that idea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm not tied to anything. I did have an LA manager, but it turns out I wasn't understanding the true process of a manager and an agent. And because, you know, this isn't like my second time having a manager. The first manager was in 2015 when I actually moved to LA. I was there for about nine months mm -hmm. and I was getting things going. But this manager, I don't know, it was strange. I, I felt like I was doing everything. <laughs> yeah. I ended up finding my own film agent. I found, um, he did help me with the commercial agent, but I felt like that was going to happen anyway. Because in Texas, I have a history of booking I had a really good ratio of booking commercials. Oh, dude, I've seen uh, you in so many commercials on ESPN. <laughs> I'm like, I oh, just had another one on the Tool commercial. And, you know, I can't remember what hardware company. There was another one I saw. And I was like, oh, there he is, you know? So I've seen you plenty of times on commercials. Yeah. And so that's kind of how I earned my living was, was commercials. I mean, I can, I can probably teach classes. And it's very simple. I mean, and actually, uh, I'll tell you what real quick. A casting director I was working on. Did you see... Um, no, no, you actually haven't seen that. I was doing an interstate supply, interstate batteries commercial, and a casting director was working as the COVID compliance officer. And I was like, oh, what okay. are you doing here? Yeah. He's like, I got to work, man. Yeah. <laughs> but he, he said, I miss teaching class. And the one thing that, he, that stood out that he said about commercial casting, he's like, man, it's just, it's very simple. They just want to see you be how you are in real life. He goes, Don't, people are always coming in trying to act. He goes, if you're just throwing clothes in the dryer, just throw them in the dryer the way you do it at home. That's what we want to see. That's yeah. it. And people always try to do too much. And so that's kind of how I always approach commercials. Just very simple. Like just do the act. Here you go. Thank you. Smile. Be natural. Be yourself. And you'll, you'll book more commercials that way instead of trying to do something, trying to be spontaneous on the spot and come up with something creative. They just want to see you be you in real life, the real person, a human. Right. You know? well, yeah. they, don't, they, want, they don't want to see me be me, man, because otherwise... <laughs> It was like the, the sad, depressed guy. And they're like, hey, man, look, it's supposed to be like a really upbeat family commercial. Like, your wife isn't dead. Like, why are Damn. You <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry. Why are you crying? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I went to the wrong audition. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. I thought I killed her. My fault. My fault. I, I was thinking about a movie I did. Uh, okay. No, no, no. It's cool, man. That's good. That's good. So, so not to get off track. Uh, back, yeah, yeah. So back to Suicide Squad. So, I, you know, I'm there in Atlanta. And all I know is my scenes are in this dungeon or what it was. You saw the movie. So it was like a hangar. We're underground. Mm -hmm. And then the big palace they actually ended up with three extra uh, scenes total. So I had a total of five scenes. They all made the, the movie. So I ended up with a couple of days extra work, which was awesome. Because, you know, you, you, yeah. you, were, you were in the climax of the movie, as I recall. Those are pivotal scenes. They couldn't cut those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember walking into the palace. We we're getting ready to shoot all that where I die. Right. And uh and I looked around, I was like, this set was huge. I was like, whoa. And James was walking in front of me, James Gunn. And I said, wow, James, all this for me? He goes, eh, just for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't thinking what they were about to kill me. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. what he meant. And uh, I was like, and he was, a, I'll tell you what, James Gunn is a really, really nice guy. This guy is so cool. And, and just, he loves actors. He likes to, you know, get to know everyone. My so my first experience with them honestly was just a handshake. How you doing, James Gunn? Boom, did the right. thing, and I left. That was did a street did, did you tell him, hey, I worked with you before on Super? Well, that's what I'm about to share. <laughs> so we're walking in first day of shoot in Atlanta, and um, it's Joaquin Cosio, the guy that plays the other general above me, yeah, and yeah. the guy that plays the Presidente I Juan Diego from, uh, from Narcos. Yeah, yeah. So that's where. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this guy's really lucky because James Gunn has never worked with him. He just saw him in the, that probably or Quantum oh, Solace oh, really? and wrote him into the movie. Oh, really? Okay. All right, cool. I'm like, that's that's how that's, reputation reputation I want. When somebody just that, says, I like that you, guy, write him in the movie. I was going to say, yeah, because as soon as I saw him, I don't remember his name, but I was like, oh, yeah, he's in Narcos Mexico. And I was like, yeah, yeah, and here recently on Netflix, I hentified if you uh, mm, want to see that show, which is pretty good. Okay. Um, so we're all three walking in and we're doing the birdcage scene. And so um, uh, James walks up, I hear them talking and I hear my name in the, in the background and I'm, they're like Gerardo or something. And I'm looking and I'm like, I heard my name, who's calling me? And all of a sudden here comes James with the DP and his crew. And they had just got through discussing whatever angles and whatever they're gonna talk, shoot. And he sees Juan Diego Boto first, the Spanish actor. And he's like, Juan, Juan Diego. And he gives him a big hug. And then he sees Joaquin Cosio. He goes, Mexico, he gives him a big <laughs> hug. And then I'm like, just little on me, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he goes, Gerardo, he shakes me. And I'm going, oh, 
like you know me yeah. <laughs> he grabs yeah. me he turns me around he goes everybody this is the only actor on the suicide squad that worked with me on super and everybody's like you worked on super and i was like yeah nice. <laughs> That's, what remembered. did you do <laughs> and I was that's just, so cool man you know <laughs> so hey what a welcome from the director right? right and immediately from then on it just felt that way the entire time i was there right yeah very that's nice really cool well, that, that's that's awesome because that's what you want right on set you're like you don't know what to expect in a huge studio and all of a sudden the director introduces you to everybody it's like hey my this is the guy i worked before that's that's really cool man uh what, what was his process like you know when you when you were seeing him direct like, was he like more of an active director like more yes or what was he definitely um you're gonna laugh because um when i got to makeup and i said that they're like who are you and I, you know and i'm like well i'm general vera and they're like general oh they're like oh Joaquin's gonna love you and I was like why they're like he doesn't speak very much English you might be translating for him on set uh, <laughs> and I was like what he doesn't have a translator on set they're like no like hardly nobody here speaks Spanish and I was wow. like you're kidding me right so of course when he walked in I was a little starstruck because I was a fan of his sure. from seeing some Mexico movies and I was like hey man I was trying to keep it cool how you doing man hey nice to meet you yeah. And I was like, I'm a huge fan. He's like, really? I go, yeah, you were in this movie that in Mexico that I saw when my ba first baby was born. And we yeah. were going through hundreds and hundreds of movies at home because we were, I was at home. She was on maternity yeah. leave. So I saw what we do is watch movies. And we started watching Mexico films. And you popped in one of them. And, and uh, it was a comedy. And you were playing Satan. It was freaking hilarious. And yeah. he started kind of chuckling. I was like, all right, cool. All right. So that happened. As we're on set, we're doing the birdcage scene and you know, he's doing his little monologue, he's talking. Right. And then the director, James comes over, cut, cut. He goes, hey, Joaquin, I need you to be um, a little more intense and be, you know, he started like directing him. And I was just listening and then he's like, he turns over to he goes, he's like, uh-huh. He goes, what'd he say? <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, oh, this is the part where I translate. Okay. Yeah, this, is, this is it, yeah. So, so you I'm like, he said director. to me, he said, he said, give him more. He goes, more? I was like, oh, hold on, James, you want more volume or more intensity? He's yeah. like, oh, more, more, uh, less volume, more intensity. I was like, oh, and then I translated to Spanish. Right. And he's like, yeah. oh, so I'm doing this the entire time I'm in any scene with him. Yeah. So you got paid extra then. <laughs> I know I'm like uh, producer and uh, <laughs> contract trans translator. What's going on here, guys? Uh, that, that's interesting. That's interesting that, that, you, that you had to do that. But that's actually kind of cool because I felt like that probably made you guys a little closer together too. You know, like, we did. I mean, he he. Had, we ended up going out to dinner. He paid for dinner. I was like, dude, <laughs> did he, you didn't have to do all that. I was ready to pay for you. you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, really nice guy too. And uh, he he lives in LA. He part. I'm sorry. He lives half in LA and half in Mexico City. So he's got a little boy that he uh, that he has, just one child, and um, I got to watch them like Facetime each other, and he's talking to his son, and it was nice. pretty cool, you know. Yeah, so I relate because I'm a father as well. <laughs> no, that's, that's that's really cool. Did you? I know if I remember, most of the scenes you had were with him. I think you had. I think the scene where Alicia comes in, right? Alicia Braga. She Alicia came, Braga she comes in. in. I didn't know I was going to have a scene with her. Okay, and then you worked in Queen of the South, so that was. Well, did you work with her on that or no? I didn't. Oh, okay. So you hadn't met before either. I so worked with he, her. She's really cool. So yeah. here's my starstruck moment with Elise. Yeah. <laughs> I'm standing there waiting to do that scene. Yeah. She walks in with one of the, the soldiers and she's like, hey, I'm back. And then I just looked up. I was on the phone. I looked up. I said, hey. And then I was like, Elise Braga, Queen of the yeah. South. I was yeah. on Queen of the South. I was like, yeah. I got to talk to her. Otherwise, I'll never talk to her. I'm the, right. I don't know if I'll never ever see her again. So right. I calmly walked over there. I was like, hey, how you doing? My name is yeah. Gerardo Hess. I just want to let you know we worked on the same show. Unfortunately, yeah. we didn't have any scenes together, but I worked with Yancy Arias. And she's like, yeah, Yancy. And so I'm holding her hand the entire time, and I don't <laughs> let go. <laughs> but she's, like, really nice. And so she's just like, uh-huh. And I'm like, I just want to let you know that this is exciting for me to be here. We're going to get to do a scene together. I said, you know, it was yeah. you. And she's like, oh, yeah. And, and, she, and I'm still holding her hand. <laughs> she's, she's and then like, finally, I'm like, oh, now. my gosh. <laughs> you can have this back. <laughs> She's sweet. She's really That's cool, sweet. Right? Yeah, she was super nice. I, I did you get to work with her? I did. Yeah, oh. I, I got. To, I got to work. With, I had a couple scenes with her, so she was. She was really cool, man. That's awesome. But dude, that's a, that's a, that's that's awesome. I mean, James Gunn sounds like a hell of a guy. You know, a hell of a guy to work with. You know, it was. It was if like you get a chance to me, you'll remember you'll... you for for future stuff. Maybe you know. Well, I'll tell you what. I tweeted this week <laughs> because I was watch. I want to watch that. Have y'all gone to see Shang Chi yet? I saw it. Yeah, it's so good. What is that? Damn, it's good. The new Marvel movie, Shang-Chi? Oh, no, I haven't seen that. It, honestly, like, I don't know. Did you see it or no? 
I haven't, but I'm, I'm, I want to go see it at the theater. Yeah. I think, honestly, I think it's one of the better, one of the best Marvel movies I've seen. Well, okay. Yeah. Okay. The, fight, the, fighting is, <laughs> the, the fighting is so good because everyone in the movie knows martial arts. So now imagine like watching a martial arts movie, but in the Marvel universe. Oh. Like it felt, it felt like I was watching like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, but like Ooh, okay. superheroes now. Okay. So like, and the storyline was good. I mean, it was it was good. I, I, I like it a lot. There's a reason why it's making like a lot of money right now. Like, yeah, it had a huge solid. opening weekend. Yeah. So there's a story that the that that actor, uh, what's his name, Lou? Um, Simeon Lou, or something, something like that. that. Yeah. That back in 2018, he tweeted, yes. "Hey Marvel, let's talk Shang Chi." You know. Mm. Oh and then really? He, yes. And so I was, and he and it had nothing to do with him working this. He had to audition a lot for this film. He had to wrote like yeah. probably something like eleven auditions. He had to really earn this really? one. Yeah. And uh, you know who was cast before him? Huh. Uh, Aquafina. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that makes sense. I mean, people know who she is. Yeah. Yeah, she just came off of Crazy Rich Asians and all that. She's so she already had a TV name. show. Like, yeah, she's already. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, "Hey, what the hell?" So I tweeted, "Hey, Marvel, um, what's up? How about how about it? Game of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy three. I said uh, I'm available. Hashtag, and then I'm and then I add, uh, tagged uh, James Gunn. Yeah. So right, because he's he's writing the storyboards for it right now. Right. So guess what? He liked my tweet, and I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah. somebody's paying attention, so okay. maybe I got a little fan over here. You know, I don't know. That's awesome. Does he follow you on Twitter? Uh, not on Twitter, but we do on uh, exchange a lot on Instagram. That's pretty big. He doesn't That's follow huge. you, and he still went out of his way to like that. That's, That's what big. I'm saying. <laughs> That's pretty so I'm cool. Putting it out there in the universe. Yeah. <laughs> Manifest. Yeah, if, I mean, if you're exchanging on, on IG, that's something. You know, that's still that's still something. So let me tell you, um, Giovanni took a huge risk um, before uh, uh, Suicide Squad came out and she Instagram, she DM'd him on uh, Instagram and said, hey, how can we get permission to do a private screening in Dallas for the Suicide Squad for like family and possibly the Latin community? Because this, this movie is heavily Latin. In, right. um, and so he was like, he goes, I like that idea. Let me get in, let me put you in touch with marketing. So mm -hmm. we're like, whoa, what? He responded like he, and she's mm -hmm. like, yeah, he wrote back. Wow. Next thing you know, Warner Brothers Multicultural Marketing is in touch with my friend Giovanni and said, let's do it. We're setting up a private screening, an advanced special screening in Dallas. You guys are going to be like part host in it. We'll have an agency that's going to run it. You guys will come in. You'll get, inter you know, like you, you'll get uh, announced right before the movie starts. We're going to have a millennial loteria game uh, mm -hmm. that this guy created for the Suicide Squad, the which suicide squad. I, I have a special copy of it. So <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to see what it looks like. I'll, I'll get it in a second when we are, are. Are some of the characters like from the movie, like the shark and stuff like that? Yes, like, the, yeah. all the cards, dude. That's cool. It's so cool. So, anyways, yeah, we did that, and they put this thing together. And so we was like, right before the movie starts, we're you know we're talking on the microphone with this uh, like influencer blogger chick that they found, and um, to push this, you know, and everything in the press and everything, and we're just kind of blown away that by the whole experience of Warner Brothers doing this and and getting this together for us. And you know, we're not like huge stars or anything, but still. For Dallas, we're the only two actors from Dallas in the, and there's only one other actor, that guy that plays Milton, he's from Houston. Okay, okay, yeah. So three three Texas actors are in this, you know, in this film, and right. um, we did something in Dallas. It was it was pretty cool, man. <laughs> Dude, that, that, that is really, that's cool that, he, that he's like that. Like, he actually responds to stuff. Because, I mean, that's, yeah. he's a huge director, man. Like, I don't know a lot of directors that do that. <laughs> I can't even, I can't even really think of any, honestly, you know? A director yeah. of the people. I, <laughs> and, yeah and i want to i want to take it back a little bit we have sure. like you know five ten minutes left i see you went to the royal academy of the dramatic arts in london in 2019 is that would it was that worth it to you would you recommend it a friend of mine had gone there the previous summer and um she posted her letter acceptance again for the following summer which is 2019 about a month before the thing happened right and so i was like hey what is this what do you she used to be in my acting class in dallas and i used to coach and tape her auditions all the time i said what's going on what are you doing in london at the royal academy of dramatic art she's like i took this course there last summer it's great you should go mm -hmm. so then i did my research i don't know why i never thought of applying to go there or anything so i get in there and it says apply send in your references referral letters resume headshots real whatever and i was like okay what the heck so i sent it in 
And next thing you know, I got accepted. So I went to this week long uh, uh, short course. Uh, it's from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. with the lunch break in the middle. You work on just like being in a drama school. So it's movement, voice, and acting scene study. And we were working on Chekhov Ibsen. So you get assigned a scene with a partner and that's what you're gonna work on the entire week. And then you put it up on Friday. So Monday through Friday. And let me tell you, man, it is not just worth it. It is like invaluable. What you learn, the direction you get from them, it's so, this is drama school. Now I get it. Now I get why you get these huge actors like, because Anthony Hopkins graduated from RADA. Uh, Tom Hiddleston. I mean, the list. There's so many actors there. Now, if I was there a week earlier, I would have ran into him. He was hanging out there. Wow. And that would have been amazing. But wow, yeah. I totally, I highly recommend it. Now they've been doing virtual, and I don't want to do virtual. I want. I was supposed to go back last year, but obviously yeah, pandemic. I, I feel like going to be worth it virtual. Like that doesn't even like. Mm -mm. You know, it's mm -mm. kind of pointless. Honestly. Can't run into Anthony Hopkins virtually. He probably doesn't even know how to <laughs> yeah. use him. Or maybe he does come on, and he's like, "This is as far as I'm going to go from my sofa to here." So it's definitely, let me just say it, it added something to my arsenal that I didn't have before. There's something in me that I learned there that raised the stakes, that raised my level of, of working on my craft. That it, it took, if I wasn't already taking it serious, I now was taking it more serious than ever. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they did that to me. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's just the way you carry yourself, the way you, you approach things. It's just, man, I was just like, if anybody, I recommend this to anybody that can get into one of these type of classes. Yeah. What definitely. do you think the biggest difference was between like a class like that and a class that you would take in the States? Accountability for one. So yeah. in my acting class where I was, I, I was in a Dallas acting class every week for 16 years. And that was part that I attribute a lot of my success of booking so much work, whether it was commercials, TV, film, you name it, whatever it was that I was working on to being in the class every week. So I would work on all these different things that I would literally audition for that very same week. Mm. If I was doing improv, that goes hand in hand with commercials. If I was working on scene study, dramatic film, I was auditioning for TV shows and films. And so it was constantly back and forth. It was like your hands on training in the real world. Uh, and not a lot of people get to do that. Most people go to school four years or drama school three years. Then they go out to the real world, still have to audition, still have to, you know, I mean, yes, you're trained and everything, but auditioning is a different skill. Right. And so I got really good at auditioning really fast. And not because of the schools or the training. That also has to do something with my past background um, coming out of high school all the way to until I, I didn't start acting until I was 29 years old. And all my 20s. Let's just say I was doing a lot of soul searching and I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. That's and so okay. I, I mean, drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I looked at it and I was like, oh, you. <laughs> so I had a lot of jobs, man. And I can tell you one year I had 15 or 20 W-2s. Okay. That's yeah. how many jobs I would go through per year. Just yeah. I would quit or get just fired. And I just like, this isn't me, you know, and right. I just, well, guess what? I got really good at interviewing. <laughs> So come to auditioning, same thing. It was like, I can convince anybody to give me a job. So that kind of yeah. played into that, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, I always, I always wondered about that, about the school. Like, obviously everyone knows that school, you know what I mean? It's like, it's such a popular school, but I wonder if you got a lot from it. It sounds like you, you kind of did. Um, I did. So kind did. of moving forward now, um, at least based on what I read on the, on the IMDb, I don't know how much you can talk about it, but you, it's mentioned that you booked a recurring, a new recurring role on a new show. I don't know if you talk so about my that. first recurring role. Okay. So for me, that's pretty exciting because um, you know, constantly doing co-stars. Thank yeah. you, and congratulations to you for all those you keep booking. <laughs> yeah. It's been a good year. It's been a Johnny's good year. Yeah, it. yeah. Let's keep it rolling. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a TV show called Long Slow Exhale. It's for Paramount Spectrum Originals. Uh, I don't know when it's coming out. Um, shot my. I shot three episodes uh, in Atlanta in the last couple of months. Yeah. Yeah. And can you talk about the character at all? I probably can't. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll play a shady booster. And it's basically a drama about college girls basketball. Okay. Based yeah. on a real okay. story or? Uh, and that, that I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I don't, I don't know much about that. I, I, I try to put piece as much as I could together from the scenes that I was in and any sides I saw extra, on the, you know, right, right. when they said sides. And so it's like, oh, like, in my, you know, when they give you sides on set, it's like 10 pages and then you're one page is at the back and then I'm like, I know. what's this story about? <laughs> were they not, were they not giving you the full script and stuff or no? Mm -mm. No. You know, I've, I've noticed that some places are doing that now. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I feel like that's such a disservice to the actor. Because it is, you, know, but you don't know the full story. Like what's going on? Who am I talking? Like, who are these people I'm talking to? You know what I'm saying? Like, it is, but at the same time, man, there's just, unfortunately, there's so many actors that can't keep their mouth shut. And I know. 
they wow. spill the beans, man. And then they, they yeah. you know, leaks are out and everybody already knows about what the storyline and plot is. And that hurts us that are really serious and professional. And then right. you got these guys that can't, Hey, on suicide squad, a guy that booked it before me got fired the same week because he went and added himself to IMDb <laughs> and announced that he was in the movie. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow, that's awesome. Oh, Dude, oh. you were about to be in the Suicide Squad. We didn't know it was Suicide Squad. We just said El Dorado. Well, you were about to right. be in El Dorado, blockbuster <laughs> yeah. film. Why did you have to tell the world after you signed an NDA? <laughs> right. I know. A lot of people are, are doing that. I don't, like, I don't get that either. Especially hey, when I had me, to like, keep a mouth shut for two years. Two was, years. <laughs> yeah, okay, so when did you shoot it? Uh, we shot that in uh, 2018. Oh, and it just came out man. before long, COVID long right before COVID. Yeah. They wrapped in Panama and right when COVID started, right before COVID started February of 2019. So, um, did you keep a uh, prosthetic starfish or <laughs> I wasn't in any of those scenes, but uh, if I could, I would, <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great to have <laughs> yeah, the starfish stuff. I thought was just so random and weird. That was great. Yeah. <laughs> Better than some weird. random beam of light or some random yeah. monster. It's way better. Yeah, it was it was fun. You're in the superior Suicide Squad. Everybody oh. agrees. <laughs> I, I agree too. This was the, Thank this you. Was the this was the better one too. You know. <laughs> I appreciate did, it. Did you get to meet any of the uh, like Idris Elba, like any of those guys? So I, no, I didn't get to meet them. The, right? no. Only just the uh, Peter Capali that I worked with, Thinker, yeah. and the two guys that you know. I did see Dal, uh, David Dalmashian in the area. He's standing over there talking to someone and. Margot Robbie walked by once. Yeah, that, was, that, was, that was about it. Yeah. Game changer. It was only before and after. <laughs> so, nice, dude. That's great. So, I, and I do want to talk a little bit off mic, obviously, too, but just to kind of my final question here is you gave great advice, I thought, for the commercial auditions. Like, if it's just one line, just say the line. They just want to hear it. Any random advice you may give your younger self about theatrical auditions or booking, if you could talk to yourself, you know, 10 years ago? I, if I could talk to myself 10 years ago, I would say read, uh, read more plays. Um, that part, of, part of my success, too, in my acting class, which was very different from any acting class in Dallas, was that it almost felt like a drama school. Our, our professor, or I would say my director, my acting class director, always brought in things that I thought were not strange, but just was just like, why are we doing this? Uh, he would bring in um, soliloquies, poems, um, things that just felt like, why are we doing that? We're supposed to be doing you know, TV scenes, like that want to be an actor. And, but no, he was really making you a well-rounded actor. And I think 10 years, actually I started 17 years ago. So 17 years ago, I would tell myself, read all the plays you can read um, and any books on literature as much as you can possibly, because that is what's going to make you not just an actor, but you want to be director later on. You got to know these stories and know stories because uh, it's not just acting. Every Everything you audition for is a story somehow, right? Even when they don't give you a beginning or end, you can make it the beginning and the end with just that little bit of a scene. So it's coming into the scene when you're self-taping is the moment before is just as important as what's in the middle. So where are you coming from? Nobody just magically appears on set and goes, you come here. And like, who is he talking to? He clearly did something before that to get to that point. Always, I always show that in my self-tapes. The moment right before, and you don't always necessarily have to tag your self tapes, you know, tag the scene at the end. If it makes sense, do it. If it doesn't, just let it end on a nice note. Sometimes they just want to see you hold your stillness, you know, and stillness is for film is very important, especially when you're taping here, right? right. Uh, for commercials, it's always waist up or full body. So it's all freedom and everything, and you can have fun with that. But TV and film is there's always a little more to that, what's going on over here in your face than what's going on out here, like in a commercial. Yeah, so definitely. The, the last thing I, would, I wanted to mention to you is uh, on your IMDb is saying that you're gonna have a directorial de debut. What what are you what are you directing, and, and why did you decide to kind of endeavor with that? So before pandemic, um, I, one of my goals on my like goals bucket list, you want to call it, um, I said I want to direct something, a short film. And as I was putting this out in the universe a friend of mine, an actress from Dallas, had written a short film. And I was just talking to her about it. And she goes, hey, I wrote something. And I was like, well, let me read it. I read it. It's a little short film. And, I was, and it's a little story uh, based on things that in her family and that happened to her. And she just kind of mixed it all together. And a um, little bit of Latin culture in it. It's a comedy. And, and I was like, I love your story. I said, I'm just going to put this out there. I want to direct it. Can I direct this? 
I'll pay for it. <laughs> and that was that, because it it's only like, needs, oh, okay. <laughs> it only needs two locations. So it's, you know, we can manage it on a low budget. We, we know actors all over the place. So it's just a matter of hiring a good DP and a good sound right. guy. Right? right. And so she said, yes. I was like, okay. And she's, it stars her and I'll have a bit part in the beginning and the end. That's fine. It's not about me. This is about me directing this. And since I feel that I have directed actors in self-tapes and auditions for the past, I would say, 10, 12 years, yeah. hundreds, and I'm, I'm maybe not, if not a thousand, I have taped so many people that I'm constantly, I, I, I see the ones that have gone on and made, like I've, I've taped some people that, that are famous now, and now I'm just like, why like am who? I making y'all a star? I need to be the star. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so I feel like, hey, I think I'm onto something here. I think I could do something with this. Let's just right. let's just start with a short film. We just start small, you know, and then we'll go from there and see what happens. Yeah. No, that's cool, man. That's good. Congratulations on that, dude. Thank you. Uh, um, and congrats on Suicide Squad and the new TV show. I look forward to when it comes out. Do you, do you have a release date? Did it mention I don't have any details yet, but I, I will definitely keep you posted. I know uh, okay. stay in touch, so. All right, and where can uh, where can the audience find you? Uh, you can find me on uh, IMDb, IMDb, me Gerardo Davila, or Instagram Gerardo Davila actor, and Twitter Gerardo the actor. Perfect, awesome. Dude, thank you great. so much. Thank, thank you, man. you for man. This was great. Hey man, it was great hanging out with you guys. And like I said, I love your podcast, man. I've watched almost all of them, and uh, I always looked forward to to everyone because there's so much information. What you guys have done is really really cool. And hey, I was in Hollywood for even for just a little bit, but uh, so I know how hard it is out there for anyone trying to make it. And so it's just, uh, you know, all I can say is don't ever quit because the day you do, the next day could have been your break. I'm quitting today. I'm <laughs> oh, come on. I love that. That's that. awesome. Way to finish it strong. <laughs> I love it, dude. That's great. Awesome, man. Perfect. Great episode. That was good. Cool.